Good evening. Y'all done? Okay. Appreciate that. <laughs> That's a real polite way to sit down, right? Like, it's time to start. I'm just kidding. Hope everybody's had a good week. Getting a little rain. Thank the Lord. Glad of that. Uh, be in Judges chapter 3 tonight. If you want to be turning there while we do that, uh, we'll take prayer requests. Sweet family. Amen. As Darby's aunt and uh, uncle are still over there on vacation, or was vacation, uh, they're trying to get out of there in the morning, but they don't know if they're going to be able to or not. I hadn't really heard anything. Yeah, they have one scheduled, and then I don't know all that kind of blowed up. So don't don't really know. But continue to remember uh, remember the everybody involved there. There's, there's a lot being affected by that. Continue to remember Pat uh, and his family uh, due to Miss Julie's passing. Just continue to remember them. couple of our youth singing at a FCA event tonight, so remember them as they're, they're there. Some of our Cherokee County folks. Do got some folks still traveling, so remember those as well. Any others? Y'all ain't near as excited as them youngins are up there. Good night. <laughs> prayer request, uh, we'll have a word of prayer and get started tonight. Lord, we come to you just thanking you for another day. Uh, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy you shed upon us each day, and uh, we just thank you for that, God. We need your grace, and we need your mercy, and God, we just praise you for it uh, tonight. Father, we thank you for the rain that we're getting. Uh, we just praise you for that, and 
we just uh, we love you so much, God. You know exactly what we need when we need it, and uh, we just we just praise you tonight for who you are. We thank you for allowing us to be here in your house tonight. Uh, what a privilege and an opportunity this is, Father God. We we so take advantage of this so often, and uh, God, there's people meeting all over the world that, that are meeting. And God, if they got caught, that that they get killed and uh, what, what a freedom it is that we've got and God we just thank you for this freedom this place we have to meet uh, which is just a just a great blessing we thank you for it Father we, we pray for these prayer requests tonight uh, God you know the hearts and minds of each one God we pray for those that are sick and hurting uh, Father God we pray for the nation of Israel uh, tonight God is there uh, in this ongoing uh, ongoing war uh, God we pray for just guidance and leadership there God, we pray your hedge of protection around them. Father God, we pray for our armed forces as they uh, are traveling that way. Some of them, Father God, we just pray for protection for them. God, we pray that this would be resolved quickly and that, God, that you would be glorified through it. Father, we pray uh, for Brother Pat again tonight and uh, and his family as they mourn the loss of Miss Joy. God, I pray that you would just comfort them as only you can, and we just thank you for that. Father, we pray for those that are going to be having upcoming surgery. And, and God, we pray for those that are uh, not here tonight, whether they're traveling or whether they're... Uh, God, whether they're, uh, they're at another event tonight, God, we just pray that you would just give them grace and mercy. Uh, protect them, Father God. And God, I pray you just let them know that we miss them. Uh, Father God, we just thank you again for your so many blessings. Father God, we do want to lift up the loss to you tonight, God. That each and every one of us, God, we've got friends and loved ones, God, that don't know you in the free pardon of sin. And God, we just pray that you would help us to be the example, God, uh, in front of them. Uh, God, that we may... Uh, we may shine a light for you, God. It's nothing in us, but God, I pray that somehow that they could see you in us. And uh, God, I pray that you would just work in their hearts and lives, and uh, we just thank you for that. Father, we love you, and we thank you, and we praise you. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Judges chapter 3. Uh, we'll begin in verse number 9. Uh, last week, we continued our introduction to the book of Judges. Uh, we talked once again about kind of how this uh, come about, the book of Judges, what, what happened before then. Uh, we talked about the people and, and kind of what the, the, uh, the cycle that we're going to see throughout the book of Judges, the fact that they would, they would sin and they would be away from God and then they would get uh, overwhelmed by the consequences of their sin. And then they would repent. God would send them a judge, and then they would uh, they would live okay for a little while, and then they fall right back into sin. And and so we see that that God uh, ultimately we we seen a little bit of that last week. The fact that He is uh, uh, He He's a loving God, Amen. I mean, He would send them a deliverer time and time again. But but at some point, you think that these people would uh, uh, would see the pattern. And but we talked about the fact that if we ain't careful, we'll find ourselves in those same patterns. Uh, that, that, that we'll be on fire for God, and before you know it, we're, we're out of his will and out of church, and it takes something drastic for to get our attention and get us back uh, where we need to be. So uh, this, this book, is uh, there's a lot of information in it, but I think that's one stern warning and one uh, thing that we can get from it is like maybe, maybe we should just stay focused on Jesus, right? Uh, I think we'd go a long way just to do that. Uh, but anyways, we, uh, we talked about the, the fact of what losing Joshua did to the people, and, and losing a leader, and, and we kind of discovered all of that. And so, as mentioned last week, we're going to look at the first couple of judges uh, this week and uh, let you commentate on that, and, uh, and then we will go, go our ways. But uh, So verse number 9 of chapter 3, if you have it, say amen. amen. The Bible says, and when the children of Israel, so I'll tell you what, we're going to back up to verse number 8. If you have verse 8, say amen. amen. <laughs> there we go. It says, Therefore the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel because of their sin, right? You know, if you get the Lord mad at you, guess how we just start sinning, okay? Lord don't tolerate sin. There's a lot of people tolerate sin. We even tolerate sin a lot of times. We serve a God that don't tolerate sin, okay? And we see that the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hand of uh, Cushan, king of Mesopotamia, and the children of Israel served Cushan for eight years. So eight years they're under the rule of this king of Mesopotamia uh, and it gets to the point that they're tired of being under the rule of this guy. I'm sure it was a change of pace for them. They were having to do things they wasn't having to do before. It was just the punishment of being under somebody else's rule. Right? They're not the ones in charge anymore. So it took them eight years 
Or maybe they had to cry out that long. How about that? Maybe they had to cry out for eight years. I don't know. But it says, And when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel, who delivered them, even Othniel, the son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. Um, so I think there's a couple things we can see in this verse right here. The children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. The Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel. I'm glad that even in the midst of sin that we can call out to the Lord and he'll hear our cry. Amen. Amen. But he, he'll hear our cry. I think a lot of times we ain't hearing from the Lord because we ain't crying out to him. I think there's something that, that touches the heart of God when, when his people uh, will call out to his name, knowing that he is able to do that. They, I guess they had run out of avenues here. They had run out of ideas how to get out of, of under this rule. And the Bible says that they cried out uh, unto the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer to the children of Israel. We talked about last week about the fact of the people were on fire for God. Right? They loved God. They were on fire for God. And like, this is one generation. The next generation, what happened? They forgot all about God. Like, how, how long did that, we, we talked about how like quickly it can change from a nation serving God to not serving God. But then we've got people here in verse number 9. So we've got a generation plus 8 years. We see that in verse number 8. 8 years. And when the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. So apparently there was a few left that really believed what the forefathers said. Y'all think so? So, I mean, something had to happen. Or maybe it's one of those things, well, I'll tell you what granddaddy used to do. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know, but apparently, uh, even though a lot of the people had lost sight of, of God and, and their help and their purpose, yet there was a few of them left that said, you know what, I know what worked in the past. And I'm going to call out to the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. I think this is very proof right here because we, we've, we've seen that that generation had lost sight of God. I, I'm telling you. I believe that when everybody else turns their back on God, we shouldn't turn our back on God. All right? That, that, that was, there was a remnant there. And you'll see that uh, throughout the whole entire Old Testament, that there's always been a remnant of God's people that would hold tight to God, hold tight to the promises of God, and would call out to Him. And we see that I believe that, that some people, a few people, started calling out to the Lord, and it caused the nation of Israel to call out to the Lord. Uh, so don't ever underestimate. We talked about it Sunday morning. The power of what one person can do. The power of what a few people can do. Okay, Don't lose sight. Don't lose sight of the Lord. When everybody else turns their back on God, you just stay the course. Stay the course. It said, And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer. I'm not glad, or I'm not only glad that we've got a God that hears us cry, I've got a God that can answer. That can answer. The Lord raised up a deliverer unto the children of Israel who delivered them. Even Othniel. The son of Kenaz, Caleb's younger brother. Uh, so we, we, we get his uh, biography right here. Not a very lengthy biography. This is just a common guy. His, his uh, uncle Caleb, was uh, he was a pretty good guy. If you remember, he was one of the spies uh, that, uh, that, that said they could overtake the, the promised land. Uh, but as far as his biography, this is just a guy. Okay, Othniel is just a guy. Just an everyday guy. But what's special about Othniel is not Othniel himself. Othniel is a funny word to say a bunch of times, okay? Uh, uh, but, it, but it's not what's in Othniel. It's what happens in verse number 10. Listen to what it says. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. It wasn't anything Othniel had to do. It wasn't his abilities. It wasn't his courage. It wasn't his, his, his intellect. I tell you, it was everything to do with what, who was on the inside of him. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. And he judged Israel and went out to war. And the Lord delivered Cushan, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand. And his hand prevailed against Cushan. So it's very important to understand that God can use anybody. Amen. God can use anybody. And it goes a long way to know that the Spirit of the Lord was inside of him. Okay. I think a lot of times we get the idea that, that, that we can do a lot on our own. And, and to I guess to a certain degree we can't. Uh, physically, I guess to a certain degree we can we can encourage one another. But I want to tell you something: you really want to get something done with God, you better be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, it says the Spirit of the Lord came upon him. He judged Israel and went out to war, and the Lord delivered Cushan, uh, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand and prevailed against him. Does anybody got anything they'd like to share through those verses? Anybody read their J. Vernon McGee? Miss Glennis, I bet Miss Glennis did. J. Vernon McGee started talking about preachers. 
that was just just everyday guys. Was raised on farms, was raised up doing different things. Uh, one guy, remember the guy's name? His last name started with a Morgan. His last name was Morgan. I can't remember his first name. Uh, <laughs> but talked about the guy that he went and uh, he had interviewed at this church, and they said, we want you to come, and, uh, and we want you to preach for us. And he went, and he preached for this church, and the church told him that he would never make a preacher. And uh, instead of quitting, I tell you what, there's a lot of people would quit because of that. But instead of quitting, he went back and he studied, and he became one of the greatest, what J. Vernon McGee said, greatest expositors that there's ever been. Just a normal guy filled with the Holy Spirit of God can get a lot done. Amen. Can get a lot done. So don't ever underestimate what God can do through just, just, just an ordinary person like you, an ordinary person like me. And I'm thankful in, in, in a group and in the setting that they're in, that Othniel, under the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, was able to stand up and help defeat uh, the Mesopotamian government. All right, so how long was they under the rule? Eight years, right? Eight years, the Lord raised up a deliverer, raised up a judge. Uh, he was able to put, uh, he was able to whoop up on Mesopotamia, and because of that, verse number 11 said, and the land had rest for 40 years. And Othniel, the son of of Kenaz died. So they had a judge. Uh, things were fine. And then he, then he passed away. And look what happens in verse number 12. Somebody read that verse number 12 for me. Just like the first sentence. The Lord had been good to them, had he not? They'd been under this rule for eight years. There's nothing they could do about it. God raised up a guy filled with the Holy Spirit, was able to defeat him. And for 40 years, 40 years, it was good. 40 years, the land had rest. And uh, it, Othniel passed away. I'm sure it was a sad day there. He had done a lot for Israel. And it says right after that, right after that, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord again. It was almost like they needed somebody else to do good so that they can do good. They couldn't make up their mind on their own and be like, you know what, I'm just going to live for God. I don't have to have somebody leading me and directing me. I'm just, I'm, no. It's like they needed that in their lives, and they, and they lost that leadership. And when they lost that leadership, they went crazy again. They did evil in the sight of the Lord, and guess what the Lord did? Maybe for a little bit he put up with it, but not long. Not long. Every, I, how many times have I said this since I've been your pastor? Sin, every single time, leads to destruction. Every, you may get by with it for a little bit. The Bible says there's pleasure in sin for a season. But I'm going to tell you something. Sin always brings destruction. Every time. Don't ever forget that. They did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord strengthened Eglon, king of Moab, against Israel, because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. I'm going to tell you something. The Lord will get your attention. If you run far enough, for long enough, the Lord will get your attention. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon and Amalek and went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, for 18 years. All right, here's my question. And I pondered it in my head today. And I've got two, two possible answers. I'm going to see what you think. The first time they were under... Mesopotamian rule, right? For how long? We just talked about it. How many years? Eight years. How many time? How many years this time? Eighteen. Was it that the Lord made them suffer through that longer because this is the second time? Did they have to cry out longer, or was it the fact that they were okay with the as long as they could live in their sin, they were okay with their punishment of their sin for longer? Is it not? It's, tr it's almost like, you know what? I enjoy my sin, and the, I will put up with the, with the punishment of my sin because I enjoy my sin so much. That's kind of what I think. For 18 years, they were under this roof. Possibly, yeah. Possibly, but, but for... So we got eight years, now we're... At 18 years, right? 
When the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised them up a deliverer. So, he's still faithful to listen. He's still faithful to hear. But they dwelt in that for, for 10 years longer than they did the previous time. It's been 40 years. Right? 40 years of rest and 18 more years of bondage. The Lord raised up a deliverer, Ehud, is his name. Ehud, the son of Gera. Miss Martha, any of that room? Okay. <laughs> Ehud was a Benjamite. Before you read that next statement, what was peculiar about the Benjamites? Southpaws, left-handed, right? They were left. He was left-handed, and by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon the king of Moab. So, so we've seen the biography of Othniel. What was his biography? He was Caleb's nephew. Right? That's pretty much all you get. Right? That's, that's, that's his resume. We see this guy, uh, he's a Benjamite, and, he, and he's left-handed, and that, he's, just, he's just a normal guy too. And guess who God raised up? Just another normal guy, right? And, uh, and, and so they, had, they devised a plan uh, to get ahead of this guy at Moab. So they were going to send a present to him unto Eglon, the king of Moab. Verse 16, it said, But Ehud made a dagger with, that which had two edges of a cubit length. How long is a cubit? I didn't look that up. I meant to. 18 inches, right? 18 inches, so just remember that. And he did gird it under his remnant upon his right thigh. So why is this important? Let's read a little further and then I'll explain. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab, and Eglon was a very fat man. Okay, don't, don't get your feelings hurt in the King James. I'm just telling you, I'll just tell you like it is. They wouldn't ever make it in 2023. And when he had made an end to offer the present, he sent away the people that bear the present. But he himself turned again from the quarries that were at Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee, O king, who said, Keep silence. And all that stood by him went out from him. We'll read just a little bit further. And Ehud came unto him, and he was sitting in his summer parlor, which he had had for himself. And Ehud said, I have a message from God unto thee. And he arose out of his seat. So, he gets a one-on-one. -on -one. Ehud and Eglon, all right? Two fine names, rather, the E brothers, right? They get a one-on-one -on -one meeting, Ehud. Uh, being the judge of Israel, trying to get deliverance from them, they devised this plan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a one-on-one -on -one with him. I'm gonna present him a gift, but I have this dagger that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna kill the very fat man, as the King James said. Uh, the Bible says that he was left-handed, right? Left-handed. When they would carry a dagger back in the day, they would carry it on the right side, or if he's left-handed, so he could draw it, right, very quickly. Most people, if you're left-handed in here, raise your hand. One, two, three. This is what Missy looks like right there. <laughs> Can we get you a taller chair? <laughs> so, so how many, four people raise their hands in here out of, out of how many we got tonight, Charlie? 45? 45. Uh, so not very many. So what these, these guards of the king would do is they would check under the left raiment of, these, of, of somebody that wanted to meet with the king, make sure that they wasn't carrying anything. But Ehud was smarter than that. He was left-handed. He's like, I put it on my right side. Nobody's ever going to know that I've got a dagger. They check him out. And guess what? He doesn't have a dagger. You can go in and see King Eglon. And so let's see let, Let's see how this transpires. Eglon, his name means called. Called? Called. You know, you know what Ehud means? Red-haired. That's exactly. Because I looked that up. You think these judges was like, have these special names or anything? Just normal guys. Just normal guys. Yeah, so if they somebody's name ain't like Paul, that just that resonates with people. Just like you say, I can tell you, 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 Verse 20 says that I have a message from God unto thee, and he rose out of his seat. And Ehud put forth his hand and took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly. 
and the haft or the handle or the uh, yeah the handle also went in after the, so how long how long's the blade 18 inches god rest his soul the blade disappears and the handle does too we're talking about a very very large individual the fat closed upon the blade and so he could not draw out the dagger out of his belly Can you just see Etho's face like during this? He's trying to get it, and he can't. And he don't know what to do. And the Bible said, and the King James says, and the dirt fell out. Does anybody got a different translation in here that would like to share the word it uses for dirt? Huh? Waste, yes. Like that's the 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 innards. Uh, do I know? Yeah. Uh, the bowels came out. Then Ehud went forth fr through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. Ehud said, I got to get. When he was gone out, his servants came, and when they saw uh, that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked, they said, Surely he has covered his feet in his summer chamber. That is another way of saying like, he is relieving himself, he is resting, uh, something like that. They said, We're just going to leave him alone. And they tarried till they uh, were ashamed. And behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore they took the key and opened them. And behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. And Ehud escaped while they tarried and passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto Sarah. So again, we see the same conclusion that the Lord raised up a judge. Uh, and he was able to defeat that. The story goes on. Has anybody got anything they'd like to share through that encounter? I gave y'all the disclaimer last week that book judge is a little bit gruesome. Yes. Killing the fat man, yeah. Verse 27 says, And it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in the mountain of Ephraim. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them. And he said unto them, Follow after me, for the Lord hath delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took fords of Jordan towards Moab and suffered not a man to pass over. And they slew of Moab at the time about 10,000 men, all lusty and all men of valor, and there escaped not a man. That's what they're saying in verse number 29, that the men that they slew were not men that were easy to overcome. These were men that were trained for battle. They were very, that word lusty means stout. They were very stout, well trained. They were able to, to defeat those. Uh, so Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel. And the land had rest for four score years. Now, how many is that? Eighty. More than, what was the last time? Forty, right? And after him was Shamgar, the son of Anath. Here's his biography. Remember the first biography of Othniel? What was his? Caleb's nephew. Remember what, remember what old uh, Ehud was? He was left-handed. Remember what this guy is? He, he was the son of Anath. Just everyday guys. The Lord put a calling on their life. And they did it. We don't hear much more of this guy right here, but we do know that he's a pretty bad dude in verse 31. Because it said he slew the Philistines, 600 men with an ox goad, and he also delivered Israel. I'm going to tell you something. Your name ain't got to be written in lights. Everybody ain't got to know your name to be uh, to make a difference for the Lord. You know that? Yeah. I mean, how many times have we heard of the name Shamgar? How many sermons has been preached on Shamgar? Not a lot. 
He's not a David. He's not a Jonah. He's not a Daniel. He's, but I'll tell you what he did. He did what he was called to do in the moment he was called to do it. And it went a long way. Went a long way. I wonder how many of us are guilty of that. Of doing what we're called to do when we're called to do it. And how great of a difference that would make. He slew the Philistines, 600 men with an ox go, and he also delivered Israel. Verse 1, so I am pretty disciplined. Up to chapter 4. <laughs> He's reading on Eglon over there. Ehud was David. And I'm just completely guessing at that Ehud. I just say it with confidence, Sam. Say it with confidence. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord again when Ehud was dead. The same pattern. You know, you know why? Daryl, I think it was 80 years this time instead of 40. Because Ehud lived longer than Othmel did. They just waited till waited till he passed away. And they did evil in the sight of the Lord again. The Lord sold them into the hand of Jabin, the king of Canaan, that reigned in Hazard, the captain of those uh, of whose host was Sisera, which dwelt in Herosheth of the Gentiles. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, for he had 900 chariots of iron, and 20 years he mightily oppressed the children of Israel. We're going to kind of stop right there tonight, but I, but I want us to really survey what happens in chapter 3. First of all, I want us to look at those guys. And I hope I've stressed that enough tonight. That the Lord's not looking at your resume. Amen. He's not looking at your talents and your abilities and your pedigree. He's not. He's not. He's looking for a willing heart. Amen. He's looking for a willing heart who will be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. We've talked about that before. There's a difference in being sealed with the Holy Spirit and filled with the Holy Spirit. And he's looking for somebody filled with the Holy Spirit to get the job done. Don't ever think for a second that God can't use you to do something. Amen. Don't ever think that. I, I, these three guys right here, they'd have never thought that they were going to do what, what they did. But when God got a hold of them, God put a calling on their life, and I believe that they believed that God could through them, they were able to do that. Don't ever think. If God has got something on your heart, if he's laid a calling on your life, don't run from it. Don't say no, because I'm going to tell you something. If he calls you to it, he'll bring you through it. I promise you. I promise you. And so, I, I don't know. That's really something that, that really stuck out to me, just the, the, the fact that he just used everyday guys. All the way through Scripture, he uses everyday guys. And then the fact... Like so bad I just want to be like I can't believe Israel did this y'all know what I mean y'all ever point at somebody's life like I can't believe God has been so good to them and he has brought them out of the pit and here they go again or maybe we've said he'll never save them they've had chance after chance after chance and and and, and, we, and we see this pattern that they go through that they'll serve God for a little bit then they'll turn their back on God, and God has to get their attention. And as bad as I want to say, you know what, I can't believe they do that, and, and, and yes, I, I can't believe they do that, I'm going to tell you something. And, I, and there was a warning last week, we just better be careful, Charlie, because it can happen to us. There's been people that's got their feelings hurt at church. They've not stepped back in church again. There's been people that's had family issues that never stepped back in church again. There's, had, there's been people that, I tell you what, we just get out of the routine and they never step back in church again. You just better be careful because it happened to them and they've seen God do great, great things right in front of their eyes. And if it can happen to them, it can happen to us. So what they did that I don't, what they didn't do that I think that we should be careful is they just lost their focus. Time and time again, they've seen, they, they seen the victory of God, and for 40 years one time and 80 years the next, they still had their leader there, and they remembered the good things of God. And when they kind of passed away, they just started forgetting, and they just lost their focus. 
They just got busy, I guess. I don't know. They seen all these other people serving these other gods and serving the world and, and living a lifestyle that was that, that seemed more enjoyable than theirs. And I tell you what, they just got caught up in it, and before you know it, they're sinning against God again. We just best be careful. Because I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one guilty of this in here, but, but sometimes it's easy to look out and see these other people just, just it seems like they're just having such a good time. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Seems like they're having, they're just living it up, and it uh, seems like everything's going their way, and, and, and we're, we're here, we're striving, we're trying to do the best that we can and live for God, and sometimes it just don't seem like things fall and, and how they should, and we can just get over, I'm just going to tell you something, guys, just stay the course. Just stay the course. It happened to them time and time. We're going to see it again next week and probably the next week and probably the next week, time and time again, this cycle. And if it can happen to them, it can happen to us. And, and I believe this is God's love letter to us, his word. Amen. I believe we learn things about him, and I believe, I, I believe he gives us warnings in this book, and I believe the book of Judges is one of those warnings. If you ain't careful, you'll fall into that pitfall of sin. It's just like a roller coaster. Anybody's, anybody... I don't know if I've shared this before or not, but I, I used to have this old football coach, and I can't say what he used to call me. Uh, but his name was Coach Hoff, and he was in the Marines, and he was about this tall. And he was just give me, give me, give me, all the time, right in my ear. He, he liked me or didn't like me, one of the two. And I'll never forget, we went to Aniana, and we were playing in a seven-on-seven -seven camp in the summer, getting ready for football season to start. And uh, we were playing Aniana, and at the time, Aniana was like really, really good. And we're crossful, and we're really, really not. Okay, I'm just being honest with you. And uh, and 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 we get the ball, and how you do seven on sevens? You start like on the 35, and you go in, and uh, quarterback gets four seconds, throw the ball. If it's not, if it's a sack, like it's it's just a modified football game, pretty much. You got to pass it every play. And the first drive, we get the ball, and I throw about three passes, and we score a touchdown. I feel like I'm Joe Montana. Okay, I, we got it going on. We get out there the next play, and they change their defense and figure something out, and I throw four straight incompletions. And I look over at the sideline, and Coach Hawks over there like this, Davis, you're like a roller coaster, boy. you like a... <laughs> yeah, Coach, you're probably right. You know what's wrong with a lot of us? Is our spiritual life's like a roller coaster. Amen. Man, we've got highs, and we... I'm not talking about mountaintops and valleys. We're going to have those. I'm talking about our relationship with God. If, man, we're on fire for God one minute, and the next minute we're down real, real low, away from God. Is that, is, that, does that, is that an accurate depiction of your spiritual walk? I hope it's not. It has been with mine in the past. Man, there's been times I've been, I've been so close to God I felt like I could touch him. There's been times I couldn't find him in a 40-acre field. We just got to be careful. We got to be careful. If they can fall into it, we can fall into it as well. But praise God, when we do get in those spots, if we'll humble ourselves and repent and call out to him, guess what? He's faithful to hear us. You know that? Amen. He's faithful to hear us, and he'll send us a, de a deliver, a way out. So, Has anybody got anything they'd like to expound upon on what we're seeing tonight?
absolutely. 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 Exactly right. Who's that guy I sent y'all that message, Charlie? That old guy. Uh, Larry Brown. Y'all, y'all, y'all go listen, to Larry Brown. But he was talking about he uh, used to smoke real bad, and when he got saved, you know, he prayed the Lord help him on that. He, he said the exact same thing you did. He said I was walking through Walmart one day, and I said he said I seen him over there, 
And he said, I'll tell you what, y'all. He said, I stand up here preaching this pulpit. And I said, he said, right now I can smoke one big as an oak tree. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> and uh, like you say, we just, we just got to stand God and be, and be ready. And I almost think Miss Glennis hit it right on the head. And, and we talked a little bit about that, the fact that when the leader passed is when they were, fell back into sin. And the problem was is they were following a man and not the Lord. And if we ain't careful, we'll, we'll fall into that rut too, okay? Don't follow me. You'll, uh, you'll be heading in the wrong direction about half the time, I assure you. All right, follow the Lord. Follow him. What was the sign say out there, Jed? You put it up there. <laughs> I think he said Jesus didn't say follow your heart or something like that. He said follow me, right? You follow your heart, you'll end up in a pit somewhere. There you go. You believe in yourself, you end up in a pit too, I tell you that. So. But uh, just be careful and, and heed these warnings. Uh, if, if. I'm not condemning you about this, but. <laughs> <laughs> and if you got an extra one, Sam will meet you right outside that door. <laughs> <laughs> tell you one of mine we just we have a confession in here like i've got y'all everybody got iphone pretty much you got android raise your hand pray for them like, like weird no, I'm <laughs> like it'll tell you on sunday morning like it'll send you a thing how much time you spent on it right there's a certain amount of time that that i strive to be under because I mean, if we ain't careful time will get away from us on this thing okay yeah. you check emails you can watch videos you can I'm bad to, while well, I like to read farming news and what's going on that way and stuff like that. If you ain't careful, and, and, I, and I always get that ever convicting message on Sunday morning when I'm folding bulletins in my office in there. Like, well, every how many hours a day? Like, are you kidding me? You know what I mean? Like, I could have been doing something else. So, and I'm not going to say my hours because you may, you're may be wait. A lot of people work on their phone. Like, I get that, okay? But... We've, we've all got things in our lives that we can do better. and uh, But if, if if we ain't careful and we don't try to do better there and try to do better here, you're just going to fall back into sin. You're going you're gonna to fail everywhere. Okay? Not like Sam said. It's a daily grind. It's a struggle. We're, we're, we are in a battle every day when we Amen. wake up. The war has been won, praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. It has been, but it's a battle every day. Every day. And what old, what old guy say? It was a couple years ago at the men's conference. He said, I just want to win more than I lose. That's what he said. How to win more than we lose. So uh, I hope that you're able to gain something from this tonight. Uh, and then just read ahead for next week. And we'll get into that. There's, there's a couple good judges coming up now. They, they're pretty rough. So uh, excited about that. Any, any announcements? Um, Ryan and Meg, I did have to. He takes me today. They're still they're headed back from vacation. They're not going to be able to do the uh, concession stand Friday night, uh, and we've, we we pretty much got it covered. That there's like a couple slots. If you feel led to do that, uh, there'll be there, the sheets back there, and you see what time to be there and all that. Uh, so you can check that out. Um, anything for this Sunday coming up? Conference will be this Sunday night. And then don't forget about October the 21st, that uh, the suicidal suicide prevention uh, class. Uh, there's more information of that on on Facebook and place to register. That's a real good deal. So uh, just keep that in mind.
Yes. Gotcha, gotcha. Trunk or treat will be inside. And uh, last year, I think we just did a table for everybody or something like that. So uh, sign up sheets out there. If, if you plan on do that, if you don't care to sign up, give give these ladies a, a heads up, kind of how to set up and all that kind of stuff. That's going to be on Halloween. Yeah, it will be on Halloween. They did the friends thing and it was pretty sweet. <laughs> um, so to keep that in mind. I think a tentative date for the Harvest Festival, 12th. That's on a. I think it was a Sunday night, right? Yeah. Uh, and we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do that here this year. Uh, we we've got a. Praise the Lord, we've been growing. Amen. We, we, we've got a lot of folks coming, and uh, we'd like to see a great turnout. And we got more room here. But it's just it's just easier to do it here. Tables and everything's already here. So plan on coming to that. Bring a visitor with you. We're going we're gonna to have a great time that night as well. So it'll be November the 12th. Uh, yeah, Pastor, Don't forget that. I can tell you that. Right? <laughs> That's the main thing. Just bring something good to eat. Huh? Huh? Yeah, yeah, probably have. Huh? Bring, hey, fried chicken. Let me tell you something. I preach like a black man. He'll bring fried chicken. I'll tell you what. <laughs> nah. Ah! fried chicken that too if you want <laughs> we won't turn it away there you go uh, I didn't mention this in prayer request already it kind of slipped my mind but it just popped in my head uh, Miss Darby starts a new job tomorrow and we're excited about it she's a little nervous so y'all just pray for her as she goes and uh, and me as I console all my animals by myself now, so uh, no, we're we're excited. So, but uh, anyway, just just remember her if you don't care, and, and the kiddos. It's gonna be an adjustment, but uh, I think the, the Lord's time will work this out. So, I just remember her. Anybody else? All right. Well, if not, Jason Mays, you care to dismiss us tonight?